the clock. Let's go. We're starting the recording. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So, Good morning. So we, um, we, this is our second official Zibwam, right? Our second official zoom in between Wall and Main, which reminds me, and I looked, and um, Matthew will introduce you formally in just a minute, but I was checking, it doesn't, the, the Neat Company is not a publicly traded company, is it? It is not. We are privately owned. Okay, because I was looking to see that was be, being that we're between Wall and Main. I always check on the Wall Street side of things to see. <laughs> and I'm always interested and curious about these things. Hey, hopefully I one day. Also, but I didn't check. <laughs> I did. I searched. I searched for the neat company on the Investors Business Daily, and it came up with nothing. So I had a feeling you were not publicly traded. Sometimes I don't come up with something, but it's because like it's a weird symbol that you wouldn't expect it to be. Things like that. So, uh, like I said, that kind of thing always interests me. Um, so, anyway. Um, so, why don't we, should we get started? Let's do it. So, I would like, you can introduce yourself, Matt. Um, I want to just preface this a little bit. Uh, the neat people... I have They're very first neat contact. People. They are neat people. Uh, they first contacted me, I think it was uh, this past summer, uh, and they asked to come on the QuickBooks show, the QB show, and we were just in the middle of, we hadn't told anybody that we were ending the show yet, and so I couldn't schedule you guys and I, because we'd already been booked, and I couldn't let you guys know why we weren't scheduled because we hadn't told anybody that we were ending the show. And so uh, I was really excited because Robert uh, reached out to me again a couple weeks ago and we have this really great opportunity. So we're gonna talk all about NEAT today. And Matt, why don't you, do you go by Matt or Matthew? Uh, either or. Okay, I've been well, called so that's fine. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna call you Matt. So why don't you introduce yourself and let everybody know who you are and, and what you do. Uh, well, my name is Matthew Toth, and uh, I work for the Neat Company. Uh, currently, I'm our manager of distribution channels and special markets. I handle um, most of our dot-com uh, retail accounts, as well as uh, our partnerships with uh, multiple other companies. And I'm here today to show you our Neat software and how it works to help organize uh, all of the small businesses out there and allow you to work more efficiently and keep all of your information in one location. Nice. I can't wait. <laughs> so do you want to do screen share? Well, uh, before sure. we get into we can, that, maybe we should just okay. talk a little bit about, like give us more background on the Neat Company, why you're here, how you got here, why you started, how long you've been in business. You know, fill us in a little bit. You know, of course, the, um, the looming question I think that our audience is going to have is, of course, you know, we're, we're in an age where everybody's moving to the cloud. So product, pr products like the ones that you guys have obviously make a lot of sense. But I think what people are going to want to learn about here in particular, at least what I, let me speak for myself, what I would like to learn about here in particular is as I'm moving my clients to the cloud and in some cases forcing them in there against their will, right? I want products and processes that allow me to seamlessly get my data into the cloud with the most minimal interaction by human beings as possible so that it lends itself to the least possible amount of mistakes and, and, and so that I as the advisor for my client can focus on giving them the strategic advice and know that, for example, all the expenses associated with all the receipts that I've produced are able to be found when needed and, and that information is able to be used in its proper context. So give us a little bit of that background and then, yeah, then yes, let's have you share your screen and, and uh, you know, show us what you got. Absolutely. So um, the Neat Company has been in business for 13 years now and we've been the leader in the digital filing cabinet category. Uh, so mostly what we do for our customers is we allow them to get all of their paper documents, whether it be receipts, business cards, invoices, POs, or any other type of document that you have. If everybody could As, mute yourselves because we're getting some feedback somewhere. Okay, Sorry. as well as any digital clutter that you may have as well. So nowadays, uh, the way that the world is working, most of your receipts come in via email. Right, whether they be an airline receipt, whether they be a hotel receipt, or an invoice from a company, most of these are all coming in in a digital format. So we allow, with one program, 
to have you, no matter where these documents come from or these receipts come from, to get them into one system, right? No longer do you need that filing cabinet. No longer do you need PDFs spread all over your computer. No longer do you have to keep checking your email, moving to your CRM system, having contacts, that business card Rolodex that we're all familiar with. You don't have to have those types of things anymore. They can all be in one program, in one location, that allows you not only just to store and look at these images, but to keyword search them, to extract the key data off of these different documents, because that's really what we need. We don't need that receipt in our hands. We need to know what you purchased. We need to know where you purchased it from, how much um, that item was, and how we then put that into different tax categories and how we move that information into the end program that we're using, whether it be, let's say, QuickBooks Online or Sage or one of those other types of tax programs. So what NEAT has really done and what makes us different is a few um, main components to our software. The very first is our image enhancement. So whether you scan in an item, whether you snap a picture from your cell phone, our mobile app that we have, or if you import that item, email it in, or sync it to our program, the very first thing that we do is we take that image and we clean it up. We get rid of that background noise. If those receipts, I don't know anybody who has a receipt that's perfectly flat, right? Chances are when you're on a business trip or when your client gives you a shoebox full of receipts, right, they're, they're all wrinkled, they're messy. They, they may be faded and, and some of the data gone. I love so that, by the way, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to no, comment on that because one of the things that, I, that has prevented me from using the sort of camera snapshot option on a lot of these kinds of programs, you know, and I've used a bunch of them like Expensify and others where you can take a photo of your receipt, and I still favor an actual scan of the receipt over the photo because the quality of the photos from the phones often, even there, it's kind of difficult to see sometimes what's actually on that receipt. Whereas, so I prefer to get a real good flat scan of the receipt on my own scanner. And at one point I was just scanning my own stuff, even though we already had all this technology. So it's nice to hear that you guys have technology that will enhance that image, even when I have taken it with my phone. So you exactly. don't like, I mean, so Seth, so. you don't like to have the picture of the sweaty receipt that's been in your pocket all day? Is that what you're saying? I'm, that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying I, I would rather, I, what I've done is I've taken it's it natural. home and I've put it on my own scanner where I can flatten it out and make sure that I get a good quality image. And everybody's laughing because Sarah's dog is in the background checking out the view out the window. No, I was laughing at Sarah because she said it's oh. natural. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, so I've I've never been a fan of using my phone to take snapshots of receipts. I've I, again I've used a lot of different services. Um, I I've used Shoebox.com for example, where I can send them in and they scan right. and then they make them available. So do you guys have a service like that? I know we're going to get into the whole demo part, but do you have something like that where I can send my receipts in, or is it because my understanding of neat and it may be I apologize outdated is that. I can buy a scanner and use your equipment to scan my receipts. Um, it sounds like from what you're already starting to say, you've gone way beyond that with like mobile app type technology and the ability to enhance those receipts. Exactly. So 13 years ago when we started, we came out with a nice mobile scanner for the business traveler for those expense, expense receipts and, and items like that. But as the world has progressed, most of the items that you have aren't necessarily physical paper documents. Right, you have those emailed items. You want to be able to take your mobile phone and snap those on the go. So we've made it a way to make that easy, right? So as, as you said, Seth, that you, you don't like taking those pictures of those receipts on your phone because you have those shadows, right? Everybody has a different quality mobile phone or tablet um, camera that they're using. So we take all of those different types of images whether it be something as an email attachment, whether it be snapped from your mobile phone, whether it be one of our scanners that you use, you email that in, and the very first thing that we try to do is clean that image the best we can. So whether it be black and white, grayscale, or full color, we're gonna get rid of a lot of that background noise. We're gonna take those wrinkles out of that receipt. We're going to try to um, make that the best image that you possibly have because we know you know, you have a receipt from this January, but you're not using it until the following January when you're getting ready for tax season. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times those receipts start getting faded. They, you know, get wrinkled. You're stuffing them into a shoebox or a bag or what have you. And not everybody has that clean, crisp, 
just right out of the uh, the photocopy machine version of these documents. So that's the very first thing that we look to do is clean these images up so that all of your images, no matter how we acquire them into our system, look the same. They have a very good image quality to them. Then from there, what makes us different is we do a full OCR on everything that comes into our system. So that way you can keyword search all of your documents. It allows you to find everything very easily, right? You don't have to turn around and go into that filing cabinet. Or Dennis, I see in the back you have a, you know, a, a bookshelf there and a lot of papers and, and I see some filing cabinets right over your left shoulder there. You don't have to use that anymore, right? You don't have to go and, oh, where did I file that document? What customer is it under? What year? Where is it? Oh, did, it, did, it, did I misfile it? And all the money that you would be saving as a small business owner, because every second of your day, you need, right? And then you really want on the weekend, you don't want to be sitting there filing all of your documents and your receipts and your invoices and everything like that. You want to be with your family. And that's really that next step of what we do is allowing you then to keyword search anything on any document that you've scanned in, imported in to, with a mobile phone. And then the third part is our ID2 technology, which takes and extracts that data off of those receipts and invoices and business cards that you scanned in. So once you have that receipt in our, in our software, we've cleaned up the image. Now you have a pretty picture of that receipt in our product. What do you do with it, right? It's really that data that's on that receipt that makes the difference. And that's what we pull off. So on a receipt, we're automatically going to pull off that vendor, that sales tax, that total amount, that payment type, and that date for you to allow you to move that into those third-party applications like a QuickBooks Online or like Sage One or TurboTax or your business cards can go right into your Google Contacts and LinkedIn and various other programs so that you can use those programs. The data is extracted for you. It's very quick and easy, and you no longer have to search, sort, and manually enter that data for you. Got it. All right, so maybe now's a good time to go into a demo and, and give us a look at, you know, some of the stuff you're talking about. Okay, great. Uh, so let me go ahead and see if I can share my screen. Okay. Hey, can I throw right. something in as you get started? Um, that all sounds awesome for a business owner or personal or whatever. Um, I'm a public accountant, so I'm going to be looking at it with a little different eyes as far as clients and getting data to me. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I don't want to throw that out there. But Absolutely. If, Sarah, can you elaborate on that? Like what, in, in what ways are you looking at it differently? I mean, I would expect your, your difference would be from the standpoint of making sure that the expenses can hold up as support under an audit. But what else might there be? True, but I, like I have, I have a, a new client now, and he's he's horrible. So <laughs> I know it's horrible with paper. Okay, the ones that are just you know papers beyond them. So they all have these. So I'm real curious. I really want to hear all about the different programs that do this, and how I can instruct him to do something that is eventually going to get to me to his bookkeeper so that they can do whatever they need to do with them, file them, store them, whatever. So, See, from a practice management standpoint, when I encounter a client like that, my response to it is usually to try and, frankly, maybe build something a little extra into the fees and take that off his hands because there are going to be those clients that you can just never trust. So I say, or yeah, but he's got the paper. He's got, he just used the debit card. I got, I got to, I got to nail him right there. Where did that paper go? Is it in mm -hmm. underneath this seat in his truck? Is it in his pocket? Did his wife just wash it? Okay. Right. So one of the CPA firms that I work with does something brilliant. Every month they send an envelope to their client with a checklist of all the things to stuff in that envelope and send back to them, including we've the receipt. Tried, we've tried the full. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, I was going by his office. So let, 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 I want to think automation fast. The dude's got this yeah. thing. So that's why I'm really okay. that's what I was just going to okay. say like I've had clients where we've tried to do that and you can send them the envelope but they end up like a, you know shoving it in their pocket and it goes to the washing yep. machine and ends up getting stuck to the floor of their truck or their car or right. they completely lose it all together so the folders full of personal receipts and you're trying to sort what the yeah and they don't know what to put in it so gotcha. anyway all right, I, let's yeah. let Matthew do his thing then Matthew yeah. show us your stuff 
Yeah. I, and, and I have an answer for all of these questions. Oh, but... <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so, so the very first aspect is how our product can help you being the bookkeeper or being the, the accountant in your daily life. And then the second is how do we automate and make your customers' lives a lot easier? Right? We know as well as you, we're not helping you if we're still allowing your customers to just drop off a large bag of receipts at the end of the year or have lost all of these receipts. That's not helping anybody. So we have a solution for that as well. So I just want to show you the, the basic software that we have here. On the left-hand side, you're able to create as many folders, subfolders. You can do one per customer and then drop down a subfolder for each year, each quarter. However you currently organize your information, we allow you to do the same thing in our product. So we're not saying, hey, neat, we know how to do it much better than you. We're saying we allow you to keep your current organization's uh, scheme in place within our software. Then you'll see in the middle here, we have a whole list of every type of document that you have in that folder. And you can share multiple types of um, items within that list here. If I can move this. So you can store your receipts and your documents, your contacts, your invoices, your statements, every piece of paper that you have. You don't have to have a separate receipt folder if you don't want to or a separate business card folder if you don't want to, but you can. So I can just kind of uh, dive into this receipt real quick. So I have a hotel bill here. It's a larger bill. Once you go ahead and scan this into our program, and when I say scan, that's either with the physical scanner, with the mobile app, with email importing, what have you, it's automatically going to pull this data for you. It's going to pull the date. It's going to pull the currency type, the total amount, the vendor that's there, and the payment type as well. This allows you not only not to have to manually enter this data, but it saves you a lot of time in doing this. So your client doesn't have to do this either. As soon as it hits our software, we pull this information off automatically for you. So this also allows you then to start placing in categories. We have a list of categories already set for you, but you can add your own categories or GL codes, whatever you would like that helps you categorize this information for you. And then if you're using, let's say TurboTax, or one of the personal items, you can go ahead and list off any of the forms, the schedules, and assign this um, a tax category format with each receipt or document that comes in as well. So immediately, Sarah, to your point, as soon as the information comes into our system, you can quickly go in there, categorize it, and get it off to the system that you need of record where you don't have to wait till the end of the month or you don't have to wait till the end of the year to do this. If it so reads I'll, my chart of accounts. It will. So if you, if we're talking QuickBooks online here. Well, most of mine are still on desktop, but you're still, you're all on the cloud, right? We, so our newest version of our software is completely on the cloud. <laughs> we sync uh, one touch with QuickBooks online and I'm going to demonstrate that and how that works for you. We do have a older desktop version of our software that does link to QuickBooks Pro. So if you do still work with the QuickBooks desktop version, we have a solution for that as well. Okay. So along with what you're seeing here, this is our desktop wait, wait, wait. software. I have a question about that. So Absolutely. do you have, I know you just said that you have a desktop product that you can install that syncs with QuickBooks desktop. Do you have an online version that will sync with desktop? Like if you're out and about, do you have a mobile version that you can use to import into desktop? <clears throat> so all, so with, with our neat cloud that comes with our product, you have access to our web, you have access to our mobile, and you have access to our desktop applications. The desktop application that you're seeing here is what we call our lightweight app. There's a very lightweight portal. This connects to all of our online cloud solutions like QuickBooks Online. We have another desktop software that will still sync up and down to our cloud that will connect to more desktop applications for you. Okay. So you can still snap so a yes, picture with mobile, yes. sync it to your desktop, and get it to QuickBooks Desktop. Absolutely. Okay. So Thank it's you. going into like an inbox first. You can either go right into an inbox, which mm -hmm. we have at the top here, and then you can sort all this information out later, or you can scan directly to a folder. And this, once again, works on the mobile app as well as on the desktop app with your physical scanner. 
Now, with all of these moving parts, with our cloud, our mobile app, and our software, Sarah, to get back to your point about your customer that you want to have instantly add information right into our software so that you can move it to QuickBooks, what this would allow you to do is you can now share information. So I can snap a picture with my mobile phone and share it right to your account. So as your customer, let's say you're doing my books for me or my accounting, I can snap a picture in real time when I get that receipt and I can have it flow right into your neat program. So that way, every second I'm getting a receipt, I can quickly snap it with my mobile app, automatically share it with you, and now you have that image. You Once being, that image touch- when you say you, you mean my firm. See, what I was thinking was, the client has an account and they would share that with me somehow, but you're saying that they can actually keep their own records and send me, co- send me, collaborate by sending me copies? That is correct. And so instead of necessarily clients- charging them for doing the, uh, the scanning for them, you can, we have a pro advisor program where you'd be able to resell our product to your end user where they would have their own need account, be able to use the mobile app. They can keep now, once again, you said all the personal receipts, business receipts, everything they have together, and they can just sync, let's say, the business receipts to you or share those business receipts with you, and then you would be able to take it from there. That way you don't have to get a weekly folder or something mailed to you or that, that vaunted shoebox that we're all familiar with or that bag of receipts at the end of the year you can now almost have this real time. As soon as they get a receipt, they have the mobile app. They can capture that image with. They can take it back to their office or what have you and scan it in with one of our scanners. They can also email it to you as well. Hey, quick question, Matthew. Um, You mentioned it works with, it does work with QuickBooks Online. Does it work with QuickBooks Desktop? Yes. Yes. And we have- What about other cloud accounting products like Sage? You mentioned Sage earlier, Zero. Does it work with everything? Correct. We, currently, we have a connection with Sage One, their online platform. Uh, we are in the works with the Sage 50, Sage 100, and Sage 300. Uh, that should be coming sometime in the new year, um, as well as some integrations with Zero and FreshBooks. Those are all things that are coming down the line, but currently today, QuickBooks Online and Sage One. How about syncing with other storage products like Box and... Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> we're moving everything to share file, but um, some people like desktop so, so, or uh, Dropbox. Some some clients want it someplace else for extra safety. Well, absolutely. So one, I mean, you you would have everything backed up in our cloud. So yeah. if they did not want to use one of those other products, they did not have to. We All replicate right. through Amazon AWS. It's bank level security. So they have that backup already with our program at no extra cost for them once they get the system. But everything that's in our system here, you can very easily just save it out as a PDF to that Dropbox folder that's on your desktop, and now it's replicated there as well. So you can get all of the items that you've scanned in, imported, mobile captured, right out of our system as a PDF with that OCR text layer on it so it is searchable. One document. And then you can move it in any other system. How could I do a whole folder? Absolutely. You can click on a, uh, a whole folder here, for example. Okay, I can important. right-click, and I can go ahead and I can move that folder. I can create a report, which basically means that I'm exporting all of those images out. And you can also do typical Windows things, right? Click on the first, hold shift, click on the last. Now I have all these selected. I can right-click and export okay. as well. Awesome. Can, can you set a preference so that it does that automatically? Or do you have to do it yourself? You mean for exporting? Uh, yeah, to share it with like Dropbox or whatever, or Box. To share or... something with Dropbox, it would have to be you select and export. Not an you wanted to share the information with somebody else, for example, and yeah, this would be that. once again Sarah's example, I can just right click on this folder, go to share folder, and now I can quickly type in Sarah's email address. Any item I add to this folder, automatically Carl will get an email saying Matthew has now added a new item. Please go view this item. 
Do you suggest, like, if I have a, a, a whole bank of bookkeepers that work for me, that we just set them up for the book the bookkeeper that's in charge of their account and then each i would get each one of my bookkeepers their own neat account or so it would kind of be more of a personalized how oh, one on one it. isn't it yeah so it's it's if you want everybody all of your bookkeepers to access all everybody's information yeah that, would, that be would be one version versus if you want each bookkeeper to only access their clients information type of it right so so okay so think of me as a big team mm -hmm. so i could have one or maybe one email login that they, they share with my, my concern is that i go into that account and i'm getting receipts from all kinds of clients and i don't know who they're from right so look when, like on so, my end <laughs> right so when you share a folder you would now have this ability to have folders in here that are shared so you would always know from whom it was being shared like you name the folder with the client name or something right so if i if i click on here and i go to share folder and i share it with you sarah mm -hmm. and you have a need account mm -hmm. i would now you would now have a shared from matthew toad folder so you would have a shared from each of your clients as they shared information. Okay. Okay. So as things are being added to it, it's just being added to it. I just, I had, they're available Correct. to me. There is an A type. Correct. Exactly. Okay. Now you can come in and see this folder uh, that, that your client has scanned in mm -hmm. just as if you were scanning it or doing the actual uh, acquisition of the images yourself. So I can sort by date add and see the new stuff. Correct. And you can okay. still take advantage of all the, the keyword searching at the top, all of the filters to find these different uh, documents, receipts, invoices, what have you. Okay. Huh. So it's almost think of our product as that digital filing cabinet where everything is stored, but now you can keyword search to find information. You can quickly run reports on that information, and then you can send that data out to those third-party programs. So I'll show a little bit on how we work with QuickBooks. So up here in our main account, you can go ahead and see the connections that you have. So we have it with QuickBooks, we have it with Sage, Constant Contacts, Campaign Monitor, some other CRM programs for those small businesses that do mail merge and keep track of their, their, um, their customers, Outlook.com, things like that. So you very quickly connect to a program. So I've connected to QuickBooks here. Now you come into your account settings. So very quickly, I can come into vendor here and I can, it'll list all of my vendors that are in Neat and it will list all of my vendors that are in QuickBooks Online. So it brings your vendor list in. And now I very quickly just map this. So if I want to, you know, map this ABC company, I would just double click, hit map, and now it'll bring up all of my vendor list from my QuickBooks Online account that I've connected to. So okay. I can choose, okay, ABC company happens to be this one, save, and now when I do my sync, it automatically knows what to attach to. Same thing with category, whether it be your GL codes, maybe I have transportation, but you call it meals and entertainment, or you call it airfare or whatever, or travel. Same thing with payment type. So you can do it by credit card, by account, and our program also allows you to type in the last four digits of a credit card. So let's say one of your clients owns a business and they have 10 salespeople out there with 10 different MasterCards. You can type in MasterCard 1234, MasterCard 5678, and then you can differentiate between those different receipts and those different users by their credit card account as can well. You can like, um, have a data, uh, links to all my clients' different QBO? That is something that we are currently working on. So if I'll switch back here to the main view, we have what we call cabinets. So once again, you're thinking of this as a, as a filing cabinet. Right. What we're working on right now is the multiple cabinet idea where you'd be able to sync each cabinet to a QuickBooks Online account itself. So that's coming very, very soon, and we hope to have that out um, you know, very shortly, quarter one of 2016. Um, and that will allow you then to sync that to multiple QuickBooks Online. That was one of the biggest take backs that we've had from some of the Intuit shows that we've that we've gone to. Right, that, that, that we're more of a service, you know, we're servicing some <laughs> kinds of accounts and... 
Yeah, nice, nice exactly. You don't just have one client, right? You have lots of different clients, lots of different companies that you work with and things like that. So that's feedback that we've gotten from a lot of our pro-advisor network and that we're now making these multiple cabinets in order to allow you to connect multiple QuickBooks online accounts. You don't have to keep logging out, logging in, mapping, and that, that well, sort of thing. Until then, can I export in a common delimited file? Absolutely. So all of the information that's here, mm -hmm. uh, you can very quickly write to Love the comma separated value uh, and, and do it that way as well. Do you guys by any chance have an Evernote integration? Do not have a direct Evernote integration from our software. Uh, we do have what we call our Neat Connect scanner. It is a wireless scanner that has a touchpad on it, which will allow you to scan directly into Evernote, Dropbox, Box.com, and, and different cloud solutions. But from our software itself, we do not have a direct integration with some of those different products. Our, our product acts as those that, that cloud storage for you, but then once again, you can just export out and import it into those third-party sure, cloud sure. So, And forgive me if you share this, I did step away for a couple of minutes to get my second cup of coffee, but is there a way then, for, and the reason I like think of the Evernote integration is sometimes I like to be able to make notes about the receipt right there in the note in Evernote. Can I do that directly here? Absolutely. So I'll just pop open a receipt here, and what we allow you to do is we have a whole note section, and we also have multiple fields. So you can create your own client field. Maybe you want to say, I took, you know, I have uh, company A, company B, company C, and I can make that as my client or my project. And I can also write notes, you know, Mike out to lunch. Right. And very quickly, all of this information as you add it is now keyword searchable as well. Beautiful. This is and all metadata that holds along. And when I, let's say, do a um, an expense report, all of these notes and comments come along into that expense report. Right. And then um, I assume it's easy to change the name of the sort of uh, receipt because I have a specific naming convention that we like to use. And it also helps with search, you know, where I do like the name of the vendor and then the, 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 the date in four digit year dash two digit month dash two digit day format. So like where is the name of the receipt that I might be looking for? So in in our actual program, there is no name of a, of a receipt, I right? See, it is just all a different based on the like vendor that, that we automatically yeah. read. But yeah. you are more than welcome, let's say, to have this project column, and you can add it in here, right? We're so I can notes. type in. You said, you said the notes are searchable, right? So I could just stick that in the like as the first line in the notes. You can stick it first line in notes, or you can let's say have this project. Uh, column and you can add anything you want and this is all searchable as well okay. so we can now say this is Copeland's and then you said the date you know and whatever your naming convention is now this is in there so we just create, add this and it's, yeah, it's see, now, now it's in there and it's searchable but doesn't it start creating a little database of projects it would create a little database of projects everything you added in here would now be in this list so you can keep going back and creating all these different projects. Uh, so you can assign like an infinite number of projects to a receipt theoretically. But because then the other Absolutely. thing I'm thinking is, you know, using my naming convention, then if I can sort it based on that name in a list or query of some sort, then that's the naming convention makes it sort really nicely where it'll be sorted first by vendor and then by date. Um, so how might one accomplish that here? What does, do you have like a reporting area where I can do searches to find receipts based on certain criteria? Obviously you have a search, but I'm just wondering what that looks like. Yeah, so we have a few different ways with this. One is the overall keyword search. You want to pull up that receipt because you know it's, you know, the Hyatt, this date, here's my naming convention. You can type that right in and it'll pull that up immediately. Mm -hmm. The second is our filtering option. So let's say I go into filter, I choose receipt, now I can pick those different categories, right? So if I had project, if that's where I put my naming convention under, I can search by product and now it will pull that information. Or I can now uh, filter out by exact amounts between these amounts by my visa one, two, three, four versus visa five, six, seven, eight, and these different categories. I just want to see all my lodging or hotels, uh, things like that. Then you can take it even one step further if I'm in a just a general area with a ton of receipts or documents in there, I can go to my reporting section. So now I can, let's say, run a spending summary 
and I can choose what I want to group these by, right? So if I want to group these by that project, now to your point, Seth, I have a whole list. I have all of my vendor one, and then I can list it by vendor one by the date or by the naming convention. Then I have all vendor two, vendor three, and so on and so forth right there in a very easy report. Got so it. we allow you to run these different reports based on whatever information you have either filled in yourself within the receipt or what we've already pulled for you. So we pull this information on the top for you, but then allow you to add your own additional fields and any other type of comments, notes, accounts, subjects that you would like to add. And these are all items that you can run reports on. Can I customize those fields or it's just subject transaction ID user? Um, it is currently just those accounts itself. Okay. So, I'm just yeah, there's, there's unfortunately because we we go through the mobile and the web and everything like that. There's no customization of the fields, mm -hmm. but you can add your own information. So you can right. add as many items to each one of these drop downs as you right. want. Got it. Yeah, but I think to Sarah's point, like I wouldn't want to use my naming convention to describe. I mean, I'd have so many different projects after naming every receipt that way. But we're um, also thinking old school stuff. I do the same thing. If I want to just look in a folder on my hard drive, I want it sorted by date or sorted by whatever. And these programs, once you get into OCR, it like takes it's supposed to take away the need to even name any any file other than well anything as long as you can search. Yeah, but, but I like having that sorted list because a lot of times I might be looking for several things from the same vendor. I mean, it's it comes from a lot of experience, obviously, working with this kind of stuff. You're saying in the cloud. Well, if you're if you're in the cloud on their system, you can just sort by name or sort. You can. I'm I'm seeing lists. Right. I can just type in the word hide if that's if that's where you're looking for, and now it pulls up anything that I have with hide, even reports that I've run with, with like a hide receipt in it. It will pull everything that I ever have there. Right. You have a whole list of your hides, and then you can go ahead and go from there. So right. you can even search or sort by the date you've added it. Even if you forget, let's say I went on, you know, I have receipts from all different date ranges on the actual receipt date, but I added them all last week. I can find those items by when I've introduced them into the NEAT program as well. So that's but the date out of it. What about the date of the receipt or the expense itself? Absolutely. So that receipt date is something that we pull automatically for you. Mm -hmm. So you can very well um, use this filter item. So I want to filter. I want to find a receipt and I want to look by the receipt date, and I can put in a range. I want to look for May 1st to May 31st of 2014, find all receipts in there. I can just look for a single month. I can say, show me every receipt for the last 30 days, that Great. type of thing. And that's all and that will show up as a column in the, in the view? Because earlier I just saw a date added. I didn't see the receipt date as a column when I'm looking at the results. Like that date column that's there now, is that the receipt date or the date added? So the, so the title here will give you that. So right now I have multiple what? types of documents, right? So I have some receipts, I have some reports and items like that. If you wow. change this all items to receipts, now it shows me the receipt there information. Is. This is the receipt date and, and those types of things. So it depends on what you're looking at. If I just have my large folder, let's say I'm in my, you know, in my inbox and I have oh, multiple different types of items here, right? I have contacts and invoices and, and as you can see, all these different types. Okay. I just have a basic name, description, and date added here. If I delve down into show me all receipts in this folder, now it gives me the receipt information. Right. Okay. Sarah, did you have a question? You, you raised your hand, I noticed. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, we've had a lot of difficulty just coming up with the best way to scan. <laughs> so, you know, handling multi-page documents, multi-page receipts or whatever. Um, and then I've got one gal, she likes to just shove the whole stack in the scanner, scan this massive PDF, and then she starts breaking them out that way. I mean, we've all sort of come up with our own ways, and I, I want to standardize this. So... Um, you know, I bought these fancy dancy expensive scanners and that sometimes I wish I'd bought some of the less expensive ones cause they have more toys, <laughs> but you know, I have, um, Twain compliant physician mm -hmm. scanners. 
Um, what what do you envision? How you know a client? So say a client comes in and they've got the month worth of receipts, Absolutely. and I've got a temp over here raring to go. What, how would you deal with that? So I brought up the the scan window of our program here. So you know if whatever scanner of needs that you have here, and we are working on a Twain compliant version to use some other hardware uh, that. The, a list of that should be out shortly here. So it but doesn't we, do it lot, today. It, it would not talk to my scanner. Today we have a Twain client that will work with most Twain compliant scanners. Uh -huh. We just don't have an official list right now that if you say, "Hey, I have a HP 2030," does that work with it? Okay. Uh, you know, we it's not been tested, but we do have a Twain cl uh, client that allows you to use most Twain compliant scanners with our product. Okay. But in our scan window, this is kind of how we take all of those different scanners and make those features into neat features that we have. So in our scan window, you can either scan an item separate or combined. So if you want to drop 40 receipts into that scanner, fire, you know, fire them through the scanner all at once, we're going to automatically separate those out into 40 individual items for you. Mm -hmm. within. That way you don't have to scan one and Think of the old flatbed, right? You can one, off with the next. You can file them in. So we have multiple scanners that allow this automatic document feeder up to the item, and there's many other scanners out there on the market that can do the same thing. And but they can scanner, merge them back, like whoops, page two and three need to be combined, or. So once you start scanning items in here, let's say you have them separated. Now I'll have 40 thumbnails up here. I can drag and drop right on top of each other and combine them right there. So wow. until, I, I know, right? So until <laughs> you go, I, I want to, once, so after you've scanned, it will say like send to NEAT. Once you send them in the NEAT, then they're kind of locked in so NEAT does what NEAT does, you know, reading the image, improving it and everything like that. But in this scan window, before you do that, you have the option to combine, separate. So let's say you scan in 40 images, the first 20 need to be one, combine them in the scan window, then send the other 20 into NEAT as individual items. Here also allows you to choose your folder, right? So I can just put them all into my inbox, and then Saturday morning when I have my nice cup of coffee and my newspaper, I can go back and do my sorting, or I can pick the individual items. Let's say I'm on customer number one. I can go to customer one's folder, scan all of their information right in there, and, and just go, go from there. Or I could have some kid over here scanning, and then I have my book, and before I send it to Neat, Say they leave for the day, and I come back the next day. I can have an I can have the next person getting it the way we need it. Like, okay, this page goes with this page, and things like that. And absolutely, are we export or is this yeah, so? so is this uh, right down here, you can either go into our program, or once again, you can just save it as a PDF from our scan window. So you can take advantage of our scanning options, and then scan this. Let's say into a combined PDF that you're going to go to Dropbox. You don't even put it in Neat yet. Exactly. You don't have to. So you can either go into Neat with this feature, or you can just use our scanning window, let's say with our scanner, and go onto your, this just pops open your typical, you know, your mm -hmm. full uh, window save folder. See, this is a lot more user friendly than all that fancy dancy expensive software that I had that came with these. So, so that's the biggest scanner. thing that we do as Neat. Um, for, the, for the first you know, 10 years of our 13 year history, we've been very, very consumer driven. And you know, as well as anybody else, when you're in the consumer market, you have to, you, the consumer buys it from a store, they take it home, they open it up, they install it. If it doesn't work right away, what do they do? They, they take it right back to the store, oh, right? And they go for another product. So we make sure that our product not only installs, works, the functionality, I mean, it's very self-explanatory, that we make sure that it works for you. We're trying to save people, companies, self-employed, small businesses that time and that money. If it's complicated and you have a 58 or 100 page manual to read, I'm not saving you any time. We make sure that it is very, very easy. Now, another cool feature that we have um, is this idea of Oh, Seth, pay attention. Did you go back, go back, go back. Go. See, see that? Okay, save to neat, but change it. Change that to save to my computer and see the file name. Yeah. So if I yeah, if I make it a local file, then of course I name it according to my convention. 
Right. Because that's concern, where you want the your name and convention. But if it's stored up in their system, you don't care about what it well, is. Well, so what I do now, for example, is I have all of my receipts. Ultimately, they land in Evernote. And then we rename the note name in Evernote. And that makes it easy to sort and search and do what I do in Evernote. So now I'm thinking in terms of if I were to migrate that process to Neat, because I love everything I'm seeing this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I really love about this is this, I can see making it really easy to use this to create expense reports, for example, for clients. Correct. So, you know, uh, so anyway, that's, that's how my brain works is I'm trying to think, okay, if I take my existing process and move it to this, what's it going to look like? That's why I was specifically asking questions around, you know, how you name things or how I would take, because I rely heavily on that naming convention to find what I'm looking for right now. So, and that's perfectly fine. You can add that to that note section. If yeah. you're going to Evernote and typing that in already, you can take that exact same approach, those same steps, put it into the note section, and that's all keyword searchable now within our product. Right. But, but Seth, I think everything that you're putting in your name is already a searchable. Already thing. searchable, exactly. Right. And, no, hey, I if, get that. So, and, <laughs> and Seth, we're, once again, we're not out to change what works for you. If that process works for you, we allow you to do that within our software. But if you want to forego that naming convention, to Sarah's point, you can search, type by the vendor, the date, filter, and everything like that. Yes, Stacy. Where's Stacy? No, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I, I thought we were on a hand raising thing here. <laughs> I used to be a teacher in my private life, so I'm always used to, you know, pick me, pick me. So one thing that's important to realize with our, you know, with our, you know, what we're now calling the zoom in between Wall and Main is that there's always two conversations going on. There's what's two. happening on video and, yeah, the remote, and then there's the chat. Yeah. And so every once in a while, Matt, you'll have to get used to this, especially as I'm sure we'll have you back on. Um, people will so, start laughing and you'll think, wait, did I say something? Did funny? I say something? No, so just so that you know, I did not have a question. What I was trying to explain is that Larry asked, how do you raise your hand? And I said, you lift your hand up like this and then told <laughs> them to look at my camera. I was just being a smart ass. That's all. I was just absolutely being a total jackass. That's quite all right. This is, this is great. So, but going back to the serious conversation. Right, and then I interrupted you and you were going somewhere else on your demo. Sorry. Oh, and Larry had a question though. Larry does have a question. He wants to know, can you scan, send to the cloud, and then someone be able to import to QuickBooks Desktop? Yes. So real quick, this, once again, this is our, what we call our lightweight desktop app. This one allows you to sync to those online versions of the QuickBooks and the Sage and what have you. I'm going to minimize this. And this icon right here is our older desktop software. Once again, when I say older, it's just what we've been using for the past 13 years. Um, we still updated. We just came out with a new version and updated. All of this software is free for you. This version looks identical to the one that we just had open, but this is a on your desktop, right? This has a Microsoft SQL server that lives on your desktop and on your computer. This program will allow you to sync to that QuickBooks desktop. This program allows you to log in to your cloud that you have with Neat so that if you snap it on your mobile, if you import it into our web app, it will all sync down into this desktop program, which then will allow you to scan or import that into QuickBooks desktop. As what kind of transactions do you know? So when we go into the desktop version, basically it's a, it's kind of a, a walkthrough that will allow you to pick your company profile that you have on there. So that way you can have multiple profiles. And then it goes into the chart of accounts as a uh, I, I'm sorry, it does not go into the chart of accounts. It goes in as a payable bill. A bill. Yeah, it see, that's the thing. You're forcing everything. All these integrations force things to come in as accounts payable when they're not accounts payable. So that's yeah, exactly. why I'm like that's, the, that's the Right, and that's what we're working on for our web to desktop integration would be the more uh, one touch like yeah. our QBO. So I think this would be a good point to show you our QuickBooks Online integration, which I think has a lot more of the features you're looking for, Sarah. And this is what we're trying to get our new QuickBooks desktop sync to look like as soon as we, we have that going. So as long our, as I our, can get a comma delimited file and I've got the accountant's version of desktop 
I can use the batch enter and decide too. So that's always an option, people. Okay. Yeah, and we do IIF as well from our desktop software. Oh, no, 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 so it's your IIF stop that. I know. I, I it's a cardinal <laughs> well, sin. I get it, but I work it's a with feature. correct data all day long. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, you can absolutely do a, a CSV file um, and, and use it that way as well. So here's my question. Uh, and if you can see my, uh, if you can look at my video feed for a second, right? So here's my problem. This is all the receipts that I've accumulated over the last couple of weeks. And at this point, I don't want to scan them. I want to send them somewhere to be scanned. Does Need offer a service like that? Or would the solution be to buy one of your products? And I assume you have a product that makes it really fast and easy to scan all that stuff. Correct. Uh, we, we no longer have a service that would allow you to do that for you. Um, but I can show you. So this is our Neat Connect scanner. We oh, also have a Neat... Yeah, we also have a neat desk scanner. And what this allows you to do is it has a different, I don't know if I can get this close enough. We have different slots here for different size paper. Um, and it also has a guide. But you can just pop this right off. You can fit up to 50 items in there at a time. So you can put in 50 receipts, 50 business cards, or 50 documents. And it just fires them through. And right they don't jam up with. because my scanners, every scanner I've ever had, whenever I try to do multiple documents, especially after the scanner is more than a couple months old, they just jam up and I can't rely on that on the feeder anymore. I have to do one individually. Absolutely. So when we, this is our design. Our three scanners are our design. And we came into business being able to scan those receipts, right? And as we talked about at the top of the show, was those receipts don't come in nice, perfect, flat, they come in wrinkled, right? They come in sweaty, as I believe somebody said. <laughs> Our feeder mechanism is made for those different types of uh, receipts, right? Whether it be a very thin uh, onion paper of a New York City cab uh, receipt, all the way up to a thickness of a driver's license or an insurance card you can fit through. So our feeder adjusts based on the thickness, but also, you can put up to 15, 20 receipts all in there at the same time, and we pull them through. That's what makes our hardware competitive with all the other hardware companies out there is because of our feed mechanism for that specific topic that you brought up. What about up. pictures? Okay. So this is my, my official standpoint, and it's not because of need or anything. Any document feeder that pulls an item through a scanner, I would not recommend to put a picture through. Huh. Whether it be neat, whether it be any company, I'd always recommend a flatbed scanner for that, depending on what it is. You know, a brand new picture, like a magazine article or something like that with a picture on it, absolutely, you can put that through. That stickier photo paper, I would not trust that with any automatic document feeder scanner, whether it be neat or any other competitor out there, I would always recommend. So with that being said, a picture, a photo is still an image. Our product will, as my computer just went Oops, we lost go? them. No. Oh, sad. Oh, we didn't get into how do you pay for this? No, he'll come back. He got kicked out. I'm sure he'll just click on the link and come back. I've noticed actually that Zoom does do that on occasion. When I've been in longer meetings with people, mm -hmm. it will it, it just taxes your graphics card, especially because of the video feed. So it's possible that that could be an issue. But it's still functioning much better than Google Hangouts ever did. No it looks like he actually lost power to his laptop because it said plug in right before he disconnected. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's so no. good. For a cable. <laughs> Gotta always have that stuff plugged in for these things. Oh, I bet he's dying. Oh, Is no. anybody here using it? Has anybody used? I've looked at it over the years, and every time I look at it, I'm always intrigued by it. I'm always looking to improve my processes. I mean, right now, I have a process that works really well for me with, you know, I send them into Shoebox, Shoebox scans them for me, and then it drops into Evernote automatically. This, the, the link is, autom is, is just there. And so within a day or two of when they notify me that the scans are online, they drop into Evernote. But then I have my assistant go in and rename all the notes in Evernote. So... You know, I'm always looking to improve on that process. Right. And it looks like you could use the neat software. Now, I missed it because I stepped away. Is, is that application that he was showing us where it manages all the receipts, is that in the cloud or was that the desktop application? I think it was using the desktop. That's what I got. I couldn't, 
I couldn't tell. So what I'm hoping if he comes back and we can ask him is that they have a cloud version of that because I don't want that, excuse me the, for using this word, but I don't want that shit on my local computer. I want it in the cloud. Right, exactly. Yeah. I, but you know what? It said export to your computer or whatever. So I'm, I'm thinking the program, that was in the, it's scanning right to your cloud. We have to clarify that. That's what I thought too. But then he started showing us that he's using a desktop application. Well, because so, we kept asking him how to do it to, to QuickBooks. Yeah. So desktop but so I, i'm hoping i'm looking for a, some a simpler way that anybody can help me scan without all these settings and you know so i'm liking that idea the thing is i don't know where okay so now see every, all these products they're all storing your documents who are they where are the documents and what happens when i retire in three years or, or i wish um we're how do I get those documents back? Where are they going to be? You know, um, See, that's why I, I love my process in Evernote right now because it just keeps it really simple for me. Yeah. Um, but Evernote, it does the, that, that whole OCR automatic. I mean, I'm, I love that, but it, it does his, his product. Seems right, wait, Matthew's back. So Matthew, as while we're waiting for you to come back, can you hear us yet? Can we hear you? <laughs> Somebody, <just laughs> Somebody took a, took a screenshot. <laughs> No, I took a screenshot of a QBO thing. Oh. Sorry. Not you guys. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> okay, listen. Matt. There's Matt. He's, oh, we lost him again. Oh, there you are. No, we uh, lost Elizabeth. No, I'm here. I, okay. I, so my the, computer decided just to turn off. I, I don't know. Well, Richard said he was, he was actually sort of stalking your screen, and he said it looked like your battery was running low, that you aren't plugged uh -huh. in. <laughs> Um, so we were asking while you were gone, um, the application you've been showing us this morning, is that a desktop app or is it in the cloud? And if it is desktop, can we do all that in a cloud version? Because I was commenting that I wouldn't want my receipts stored in any desktop application now. I want it all in the cloud. Yes. So uh, let me go back and share my screen here if it's not. Okay. Yeah. No, it's not. Do it again. Do okay. it again. So this is a app. This is just an app. Everything here is syncing off of our cloud. Okay. So this is more of just a portal. Everything's in a temp file while I'm using it. So mm -hmm. if, for example, I lose connection, I can still keep working with my document, but it's just in a temp folder that disappears for you. Got it. Let me go ahead and bring this up. This is just a, a browser, right? So I go to neat.com mm -hmm. and I can log into our web version of this. So this is our web uh, version that you can log in and access any computer that you have, right? So whether you're at a hotel, whether you're just at your office, and this is the same folder that we've been looking at here with all of those same items. And would so I see, see the folders that clients have shared with me if they've got the need account? That absolutely. Where I would see them? Okay. Right down here, you would have, it would say in blue, it'll say, you know, shared by Matthew Toad. Shared oh, okay. by Sarah. Section. And then I could click on this and it would be its own cabinet as you're seeing here. So you see Max's cabinet, which would be my demo account's cabinet. But then down here you would say shared by Matthew. And I could share one folder. I can share 10 folders, subfolders, what have you. So, so I, okay, so I own the company. I would have my, this is Max's cabinet, my cabinet. All my clients, Correct. maybe, and then I can share with whoever's work, work, my remote bookkeeper, and they have their own Neat account. With exactly. Their exactly. So that way you can share, let's say this folder here is a client, and right. let's say you own the company, so you want to be able to see the client's folder, but then maybe their main bookkeeper needs to see it as well. And I want to disconnect share. it if they leave. Yes, absolutely. So I can go ahead and share this with 10 people. I can share it with my need account. I can. Oh, good. I can share it with all my bookies. I can share it with all these people. And then you see right here. Mm -hmm. So this account is already shared with a coworker of mine. Mm -hmm. Let's say she leaves the company. I can just click X and it New car. no longer gives her permission. Okay. Hmm. 
Who's paying for what? So each license, so as you're looking for right here, max this demo account, that is one license. Okay. So each license allows you to have your cabinet and have your information and be able to add information into it. So you would need one account for every person that was adding items to our software. Mm -hmm. I can, with our, with our premium version that you see here, I can add up to two users. So let's say I'm one of your bookkeepers, Sarah, mm -hmm. and let's say you are just the, well, the owner of the company and you aren't doing any day-to-day -day bookkeeping, but you're keeping tabs on all of us. I can make you a user on my account, so that way you can log into my Meet, see everything I'm doing, all of my customers, all of my clients, but you don't have to pay for an account for yourself. Myself as the bookkeeper would need an account because I'm adding documents and I'm running reports and doing things like that. So very easily, I can come into my account and I can add up to one other person into my, um, into my account. So I can have somebody added into my account and that way you have full access to that as well. You'll see the users tab here and I can go ahead and add or remove anybody that I would like to give access to. This is also a great feature. Let's say I'm your end client. I can give my bookkeeper access to my need account. They can come in, run the reports, do all the work, and then I can say, all right, I'm going to remove you until next month when you come in for maintenance. So I need to start with the, the client needs to go get their account and maybe add us. And then add one, and they can add you to come in, or they can share information, and each one of your bookkeepers can have an account as well. Now, if it's my account, can they scan right into my account? Or? If they're going to add information, they have to have their own account. That's what I'm saying. So all clients have to get their own account. Correct. Share with us. They could just tack on one of the bookkeepers or me. Or right, they can either share they can just with you. Share, they can just share with us anyway. Exactly. So if all of your bookkeepers have their own account, they can just share. It makes it so your bookkeepers log into one login and see all the other clients' information. They don't have to worry about a separate login for each client to go in and manage their books that way. This would be cool for like if I if I want to do it for say me and my husband, like a family. Correct. Yeah. Right. As a family thing, as kind of an individual user, I would add myself and my wife. That way both of us have the mobile app. We can both add information. We can both run reports. We can, ex we can have full user settings. So as we call them users, don't get into the idea of, oh, well, I have an admin and then a user below me. These are just full people that can access it. So you would probably not want your client to have access to your need because now you have multiple clients in there. Mm -mm. So you wouldn't no, want, want to think of it as that. I want to control sharing each individual folder or whatever. Exactly. And that's where the sharing aspect comes in because you can tell who has access to what folder. Mm -hmm. Even as a client of yours, I can have 10 of my own personal because I like using Neat for my, my home things and everything like that. Then I can just share my three or four business holders with you, my bookkeeper, and that way you only have access to that information. Yeah, I, but can, I, can, still, I can do that in um, Evernote, but it's not it doesn't like the the husband wife thing. I mean, we're we're like, right. yeah. So I, I I'm liking your interface a lot. Well, what I don't love about Evernote ultimately is that it is a cloud product that really works off of a sync to a desktop application. So as soon as you start collaborating with others in Evernote, you you get conflicts almost guaranteed. Mm -hmm. and that's where I won't use. That's why I'm trying to divest processes away from Evernote and into things that are more reliable in that regard. I just, I have too many problems with Evernote as soon as I'm trying to share things with other people because of the desktop sync aspect. Now, Matt, it sounds like even though in Neat, I might be working off of a desktop application, um, it doesn't, and especially because the nature of what we're doing here is receipts, that it doesn't sound like there's a great likelihood that if I have another user here, that we, we could both be editing the same receipt at the same time and get a conflict. Is that something that could happen? Or how is that sort of handled with Neat? Mm, good question. 
So everything is in real time. Uh, so once again, you would want to be careful on who you're giving access to, right? So if you have the husband-wife um, example that Sarah had before, you'd want to be very careful on when people were logged in. The sharing aspect of it, that's not an issue because you have either read-only rights or edit rights, so you know who's coming into the system at that same time. Can we edit the at the same time? Does it have a little fight? Will it lock? In other words, I guess what I would hope for is that once I'm in, because it is real time, that anybody else would be locked from being able to access that receipt until I've come out of it. Correct. Your main account overrides anything else. So if, if this is my account, I come in here, I can edit it. But when I share this folder with Sarah, she cannot come in here and edit my data. Well, okay, what? Okay. You can run reports on this, but I, so for example, like I may not want somebody to come in here and change the total amount. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm the I only one who can do that. Okay, so the client has the need account. They're sharing their folder with me, but I can't edit? You wouldn't be able to edit this information here. Okay. How about the categories and things? The, the categories, the notes, everything like that, you can absolutely edit. Same thing with you can comment back and forth as well. Okay, so, so back to Seth's question, I'm editing, they're editing, who, who's the boss? So the boss would be the main accountant, uh, the main account holder. So if I'm the client, Anything I'm doing would override anything that you're doing as the sharee just if because we, it's my account. Yeah, if we just happen to be in that same receipt. If you happen to be in, um, and like I said, well, our, our cloud has been around for two and a half years, and I have not heard of this even being uh, close to an issue. So. Okay. Okay, so the original OCR that scanned in, that, that happened at the client side. We can't edit that, but we have the power to edit other things, okay. okay, okay. Correct, and run reports and things like that. Now, with that being said, Sarah, going back to the very beginning of our conversation, you have a client, they're mm -hmm. horrible with paper, now mm -hmm. let's say they've snapped the picture with their mobile, mm -hmm. are they gonna go back into our system and let's say verify that this information is correct? Absolutely not, right? So we, our ID2 technology that parses or pulls this information off we're in the high 80s, low 90 percentile of accuracy. There's nothing out there that's 100 percent. I'm not going to promise that we are. Okay. But what we added, if you can see up here, these credits, this is called Neat Verify. This kind of goes back to Seth's point of, oh, I'm going to mail in my information, have somebody scan it, and do all this recognition for us. These verif verification credits are manual human verification of your information. So I can turn this credit on either at scan on the mobile app while I'm putting something through the scanner or after it's in the system, and this will be manually verified to ensure 99.9% .9 accuracy as well. So this takes that whole idea of even having to go back and check the receipt kind of out of the equation. Okay, and that's another revenue stream for you because say I'm using that service a lot. How do you th okay, so can we talk, I know we're over time. Can we talk a bit about? Yeah, I'm going to have to run actually myself in a minute because I have somebody actually waiting for me to log in with them. Yeah, me too. So, so, so maybe this is a good time to actually wrap up. Um, but uh, Matt, if you wouldn't mind, you can turn off your screen share so we can see you once more um, on the screen. And then just quickly um, let us know how we can get started with Neat if people are interested. You know, and, and did we go over pricing? And I'm sorry, I've been a bit nah. distracted. Yes, so, the pricing that I wanted to, to say real quickly before we log so off. Pricing and how do we get started? Is there a free trial? Is there a partner program for accountants so that as we're referring work, our clients, we can, you know, those kinds of things. Absolutely. So uh, the, the very first place to visit is neat.com. That's N-E-A-T dot com. That is our main website. On there, you will find all three of our scanners and information about those. With our scanners, you get one year of our cloud service, the mobile, for free at no extra cost. At the end of one year, our premium service is $120 for the year. That gives you all of the premium activations, such as the QuickBooks Online and the Sage and, and so forth. If you decide not to pay the $120 after the first year, you still have mobile access. We still store all of your information. You can access everything at no cost for you for the remainder that you use the NEAT program. 
We also have a partner program. If you go to neat.com at the top of the scroll bar, you'll see a partner program. We have QuickBook Pro Advisor programs. We have reseller programs. We have dealer programs, as well as uh, free trials on our website as well that you can uh, take the software for a spin, use the mobile app for 30 days at no cost for you, and check that out as well. Cool. So I'm envisioning 120 a year for all my remote workers. And that would be after the first year if you purchased right. a piece of hardware. And the client. I have to say, client, you're going to pay 120 Internally, I'm going to eat 120 Okay. Right. And that would also save them on some of those services of sending that folder in and having you scan and, and those types of things. Do you, right. you pay up front or do $10 a month? Um, it would be fourteen ninety five a month or one hundred and twenty you know? for the year. So you're getting savings by going for the full year subscription. Yeah, it's so you get a break if you pay up front. Okay. All right, basically ten dollars a month versus the fifteen. Yeah, that's huge. Okay. Thank you. All right. You're thank you so welcome. much, Matt, for being with us this morning. Really appreciate you taking the time out and showing us neat. Love what I've seen and. Uh, you know, I'm excited to actually take a deeper look at it myself. Absolutely. All right. Thank, Thank you, for you having everyone. Me. The recording will go up on YouTube within the next few days, and uh, this way people can watch the replay of this. And, and then, uh, Matt, how do we reach you if we have questions? Um, I'll, I'll give you my email address if that's, uh, if, that, if that's the best way. Yep. Okay. It's uh, mtoth at neat.com. Great. That's easy enough. Uh, folks, we'll see you all next week. Have a nice weekend. All right. Take Thank care. You.